Welcome to Last Set News. My name is Rob. And today, just like the thumbnail and title suggests, we have to take a real hard look as to what is performing and what is vastly underperforming in the crypto market. What I'm talking about today is we I took a look at just how things were going in the top 20 for different cryptos. And I wanted just to take a look at because I do a lot of value investing. I tend to focus a lot on the top 20. I tend to see which ones are doing pretty well. And the question I had this morning was, uh, well, which ones are performing the best in the top 20? And um, since we hear all the time about Bitcoin, now a lot of us, I mean, if you're not uh, you know, checking the charts every day and taking a look at the different uh, price action, you probably just think that Bitcoin's doing the best. Well, it's not. And uh, I just took a look at these top ones, and this is what I found out. So with Bitcoin, Today, again, it is February 11th, wow, 2023, and uh, we've had a little bit of a tumble, especially with a uh, friend of the show, Gary Gensler. I know he watches. I know you watch, Gary. And he uh, came out and talked about uh, staking and shutting things down, and it spooked a lot of people, which I thought was ridiculous, but uh, whatever, here we are. So uh, Bitcoin took a little tumble at 21.7, and I just wanted to take a look at what I'm really going to focus on is this, this part right here, uh, the all-time highs. The all-time high from what Bitcoin was at was roughly 69K on November 10th, and it dropped negative 68%. Now, when we go forward, I'm not saying that uh, Bitcoin will be the big loser or nothing will overtake. I'm just saying at this point, we're taking a snapshot. I'm not looking at 30 days or six days or 90 days. I'm just taking a look at the all-time highs to how things have fallen and which one has done better, and it ain't Bitcoin. And actually, Ethereum is doing pretty good. I mean, it's at 68%, 68.8%, which is roughly the same as Bitcoin. So 68.5, negative 68.8. So really uh, not too bad. Now we take a look at Binance coin. I don't have, well, I have, no, that's not true. I have very little of, of BNB. I don't dollar cost average it. I don't invest into it. And I was taking a look at it. And uh, what Binance is doing is all they had to do is just show up and not fail. Essentially, that's what everybody else, all the exchanges are doing. And because of that, their token is actually down negative uh, 54.9. So we'll just say 55% from its all time high, which is in May 10th, which is pretty darn good compared to Bitcoin and Ethereum. But how does it stack up against everything else? Well, XRP, which I think will rise up uh, magnificently as soon as it beats the SEC, is down almost negative 89%. That's quite a drop. Cardano, another big uh, one of the losers that are going that I presently dollar cost average, negative uh, 88.3%, not too great. Dogecoin, how bad is that? Negative 88.7%. Polygon, now this one's interesting. And it's interesting because surprise, I own it. And I'm gonna get more biased towards this one. So unfortunately, or fortunately for me, this is only down negative 57.3%. So not as good as Binance at 55, but I mean, look, that's that's pretty darn good as far as how things are going. Now, remember, I have always said, pay attention to the cryptos that are doing well in the bear because they will crush it in the bull. And there are a lot of high profile connections that Polygon is doing. I mean, they just got picked up uh, by Disney. They just got picked up by Nike. They're working with Starbucks for their NFT platform. And, and, they, and they power a lot of the blockchain games out there. Genzo Kishi being one of them and a couple different ones that I, we've talked about before. And the reason is, is because the, the fees are low and they just upgraded to lower those fees even more. Now, it's not super duper cheap, but I got to tell you for what it is, I think it hits kind of a sweet spot. Now, of course, there are other cryptos that are much cheaper than Polygon, but it's like Polygon and Ethereum, because Polygon's a side chain of Ethereum. It seems to kind of be a nice synergistic effect. And I'm glad that I'm dollar cost averaging this one. So really, if you take a look at it, these are the top two, Binance Coin and Polygon. But let's see how the other ones are faring as far as all-time high. Solana is the worst on this list as far as in the top 20. They're down not negative. 92%. If it wasn't for that rally, they were down like 97% for the year. Shiba Inu, I know some people love it, but hey, better than, better than my Cardano, negative 85%. Polkadot, negative 88, almost 89%, another big uh, tumble. Litecoin, doing pretty good, but it's having coming up, negative 77%. Tron, something that I don't talk about too much, which maybe I should talk about, only negative 72%. Avalanche, negative 87, almost 88%. And Uniswap, to round it all out, 
at negative 85%. Those are some pretty big numbers. So again, I'm not saying that uh, Bitcoin is going to always be down so much. It's got some pretty good utility. There's some things going on. But again, I'm just showing you the things that are outperforming all the others in the top 20. We can cherry pick and go down that list, 30, 40, 50, but not really too much is doing that great. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section. But again, I would take a look at those and uh, maybe do a little bit more research on them. So that is that. And then there are some things that concern me. And the next little segue, it's about Tether. And look, the thing with Tether is I never really trusted it. I never did. I know some people love it and they use it all the time. I just never trusted Tether. And if this is true and there's some things that came out, we're in for a world of hurt. So Tether's attempt to block Coindesk request for stablecoin reserve records is dismissed by a New York court. This is all it is. There's nothing going on right now. But it is interesting. In June 2021, Coindesk filed a FOIL, a Freedom of Information, a Freedom of Information Law. It's a request for some of the documents from the inquiry from the New York Attorney General, specifically asking for documents about Tether's reserves. That's all it's asking. Like, look, just show us your reserves. We just want to see what it is. And Tether's like, no, we're not going to do it. And they fought him in court since June 2021. Well, that just got lifted. And this is from uh, the judge wrote, and this is uh, the uh, Supreme Court judge from, from New York says, Tether did not prove it would suffer a substantive competitive injury that would meet the FOIL rules parameters. We, he reviewed materials submitted by the crypto companies and found absolutely no items that could be described as unpredictable or proprietary. Again, this is Coindesk. You know what else Coindesk did as they revealed different things? They also revealed FTX and their problem with proof of reserves and the insolvency rumors and all the things that happened on November 7th, 2022. Now, I'm not saying that this is going to come down and Tether is going to be proven. I'm just saying it's quite interesting, the timing and the things that are going on, just how hard Tether has been fighting to not show any proof of reserves, even though, yes, they did have an audit from a Bahaman company, but we know how good those are. Anyhow, let me just think about that in the comment section. To finish this up, we'll talk a little good news, which is Ethereum is coming out with their Shanghai hard fork, and it looks like they're moving forward. I thought they were going to delay it, but no. So this is going to happen on February 28th. This is the test net. And of course, with a Shanghai protocol update will do, it will allow people who have staked their Ethereum to unstake it and collect those sweet rewards. So a lot of people are saying this is going to be the apocalypse and people are going to sell out of Ethereum. Some people say, no, if they're you know already in this one and they, and they staked it without knowing when they could unstake it. So they're pretty much big believers. I personally couldn't care less. I, it, if everything falls down to the ground, that's fantastic because I have my dollar cost average that goes on every day. I dollar cost average three different cryptos every single day. And that's uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Polygon. And then the other ones that I dollar cost average are, I mean, we talked about this before, Polygon and Near and Cardano and a bunch of different layer ones and Polka, well, Polkadot and Chainlink and uh, some other ones that I won't disclose right now. But um, look, I think that's a uh, positive and moving in the right direction. So that's a little bit of good news for the day. And then lastly, I just want to give a shout out to uh, Epic Art. They were part of our Sweatcoin January challenge. We had a lot of people, uh, 30 winners, and uh, three of those winners got their pieces of Epic Art, which is just crypto art that's uh, going to be shipped to them. So there's one of the pieces that was chosen. It's pretty nice. I like that one. I like this one, a little Bitcoin in the background. And just so you know, there's going to be a link in the description. If you use Dan, I think you get 20% off. And they've got a bunch of different uh, crypto-specific artwork you can hang on the wall. And what's cool about that, well, first of all, here's the one I'm going to buy, Voyager. I'm going to tell you why in a second. So if you go there, I mean, all of them have different, uh, different sizes. You got 12 by 12, 24 by 24, 36 by 36. But uh, wouldn't that look sweet above your, above your uh, sofa or wherever you're at? So uh, yeah, I'm gonna, probably going to buy this one. I'm going to tell you why I'm going to buy this one. It's because it's, gonna, it's a constant reminder to me. I hope, hopefully they have a Celsius one too. It'll be a constant reminder to me that all the things that we think we know and we're so sure of, 
that uh, sometimes we just don't get it right. We need to be a lot more careful and do a little more due diligence. That'll be my constant reminder. And uh, that is it. And then lastly, lastly, to bring this up, if you are uh, in Puerto Rico area, I will be doing a, uh, a shelter dog walk at eight o'clock tomorrow, Sunday morning at Amigos de los Animales. So we walk the dogs from eight o'clock in the morning until about nine. They get out, they're all shelter dogs, they're all cooped up. And of course we get to walk down the boardwalk. It's very beautiful, very nice. Go on the beach, it's great. Dogs really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. And then I treat everybody I take everybody out to breakfast afterwards. So if you can make that, let me know. Uh, there's a link in the description. You can find that information. And that is it for today. So look, that's all I have for Saturday. Hopefully you enjoyed the weekend. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are time sensitive, especially like that tether story. That's it for today. So thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.